Hi, my name's Amelia, and I'm so excited to be sharing a different type of video with you this week, so do stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to So Amelia. This week, my very good friend Amelia and I got together and had a lovely chatty catch up all about our latest make, which is the Amelia dress by OJ Room Patterns. Now, Amelia and I have been working together on a couple of projects recently. We made the Wardrobe By Me Amelia bomber jacket back at the end of last year together, and we had so much fun doing that project that we thought we needed to do another Amelia pattern together. Now, we found this OJ Rooms Amelia dress, and we thought it looked like a really fun pattern with lots and lots of different options to make it quite a good one to collaborate on. So we didn't know beforehand what variation of the pattern each other was going to choose. Bear in mind that in the pattern envelope, they mentioned 28 different variations that can be made with this pattern by adjusting the tiers that you add or the different collar pieces that you add, just to name a few. So it was really, really lovely to get together earlier this week and to see which of these variations that we had chosen to make. In terms of sizing for this pattern, I'll just briefly mention that here. It does come in sizes extra, extra small through to a 3XL, and that is a bust of 30.3 inches through to a bust of 41.3 inches. There is quite a lot of ease through the waist and the hips, so those measurements aren't quite as important, but the bust measurement, there isn't a huge amount of ease there. There are no fixtures or fastenings on this dress. There is a waist channel, an optional waist channel, which you can add with waist ties, so you can cinch it in at the waist a little bit. But apart from that, there are no fixings and fastenings, so this dress came together pretty quickly, which was great. So now the next part of this video is going to be the conversation that I had with Amelia earlier on in the week, where we asked each other some questions about how we found sewing up the pattern, the fabric we used, all sorts of different pattern review questions. And I have to give a big thank you to Teresa who is lost my thread here on YouTube and on Instagram. If you haven't seen her pattern reviews over on her channel you really should. She gives such fantastic detailed pattern reviews and I absolutely love the set of questions that she's put together to inform those reviews. So I asked Teresa if she would mind if Amelia and I used those questions for our pattern review and she very kindly agreed. So a big thank you Teresa for those questions. It was such fun asking them of each other and I hope that you enjoy our review of the Amelia dress by OJ Room Patterns. Hi, I'm Amelia. And I'm Amelia. And welcome to our video where we're going to do a pattern review of the OJ Room Amelia dress. Shall we start by introducing ourselves? Yes, yeah, perfect. So if you don't follow me, I am So Amelia and I'm on Instagram and YouTube. And we became friends through Instagram. And we're both from New Zealand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm Amelia, and on Instagram, I'm Amelia Ellen Sows, and I have just started a YouTube channel within the last couple of months, and I'm really enjoying it, and it's going really well. So yeah, we thought it would be fun to get together and sew some patterns together. We did the bomber jacket, the Amelia bomber jacket, last year, and then this year we've done the OJ Rooms Amelia dress. All right, so question number one is what drew you to the pattern and why did we want to make it? Well, I think one of the main reasons was it was called the Amelia dress yeah, exactly. <laughs> and we were trying to work our way through all the Amelia patterns. <laughs> so yeah, I think that was the main reason, but also it is a really beautiful dress and it's got some really lovely features as well. And it's just something that we both wanted to, to make. Mm. Yeah, I think I quite liked the look of the tears, especially coming into the summer. It looked like mm. a good dress. So what fabric did we choose? So we chose a sandwashed viscose, isn't it, from mm -hmm. Lamazi Fabrics. And we used that to make the bomber jacket, didn't we? We did, yes. yeah. That was the, the black one. The, yeah, the black fabric on the inside of the tulle. Yeah. But it was so nice to work with, and so I thought it would be really nice to use it again. So we decided to use the same fabric but different colours. Yeah, so I've gone for the magenta colour, which is actually quite purple um, in real life, but it's a really beautiful colour. It's so pretty. Yeah. yeah, and Amelia's gone for... I went for the blue. I think it was just called blue, but it is quite a bright cobalt blue, which I thought would be really nice for the summer. I've got like a jumpsuit, which is a similar colour to this, which I really love. I sh I'll take this off so you can see it. It's just <laughs> quite cold today in London, so I'm going jump on. There we go. <laughs> so yes, I went for the cobalt blue colour, which I really like. Right, what size did you choose? Right, I chose the size medium, and that was based on my hip measurements. Uh, I didn't grade it, so it is a bit roomy at the top, but I quite like that for a dress. I think it's quite nice to have just a roomy, floaty dress, so yeah, I went medium. 
I went medium as well actually, <clears throat> I was just looking at the, the measurements, it go, does go from an extra extra small through to an extra 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 large, that's what, a bust of 77 centimeters up to mm -hmm. 105 centimeters. so that's quite good. But yeah, I fell into a medium for my bust and then a large for my waist and hips. It fits quite snugly okay. over the bust, which is nice. But then yeah. there's quite a lot of wiggle room in my waist and hips, which is odd because it's set to size up to large for that. So I'm glad I didn't. So yes, yeah. I made a straight size medium as well. So did we make any hacks or alterations to the pattern? So I think this pattern was amazing, wasn't it, in terms of the different options mm -hmm. that it presented. So you can make it with the ruffle. I think we both went for the ruffle. Yeah. And... <laughs> <laughs> and the collar you can leave can you leave the collar off I think you can make it collarless as well yes I think you can yeah. and then there's the short sleeves or the long sleeves and then there's the waist channel or not the waist channel I didn't count how many options but there are so many so I didn't actually hack anything I just decided which bits I was going to leave on and which bits I was going to take off so you'll see I've made the short sleeve version mm -hmm. and I have done the collar with the frill but I didn't do the tie Yes. What about you? So I went for the tie collar, as you can see, which I really like. I went for the ruffle collar and also I went long sleeve, but I didn't make the sleeve placket the, um, on the sleeves. I just went for elastic. And I think I just really like that finish on, I think it looks nice. You can see the sleeves have got quite a lot of room in them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I also didn't do the waist channel. I did take three centimetres off the bodice because I do have quite a short torso and I'm just really pleased with it. It looks yeah. good. Because I think it's meant to be quite a low-waisted dress, isn't it? It is. And so yeah. I, I think we both decided not to put the waist channel in because that would have ended up around our hips. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. But I think I might go in later and make the waist, like take an inch out of the waist because it is yeah. quite low. Yeah, yeah, and I also might take a bit more off mine as well because I do have a short torso, <laughs> but I, I don't know. I'll, I'll see, I also thought about maybe adding elastic, um, mm. which I've done with the wild gown before, and it just kind of brings it in at the waist and gives the dress a bit more shape. So mm. I might do that in yeah. the future too. I think I might, yeah, I've got, quite, I've got a bit of fabric left over. So I think I was saying to you before, mm. I might go in and add waist ties as well because I do like the floaty thing for summer. Yes. But it's quite nice to have the option to bring it in if you want to. So that is in the original pattern as well. You can yes. make the waist channel. But nice. we'll see. Oh. I'm going to wear it for a bit first and see if I want to go in and change anything. Mm -hmm. So how were the instructions? I found the instructions quite good. Yeah. Um, I, what I liked about the instructions is with each written instruction, there's a little picture as well. Mm. So I found, found them quite easy to work with. And yeah, I, I, I enjoyed making the pattern, to be honest. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the instructions were fine. The only area I really struggled with was putting this collar in. I think I've just put these collars in differently before. This one was put in from the inside to the outside, rather than from the outside to the inside. <laughs> and I just found the instructions quite confusing. They are quite brief. So I think if you're a beginner, you mm -hmm. might want a bit more hand-holding than these instructions do provide. But having said that, there is a YouTube video. I was quite confused by the collars. So I did go onto her YouTube channel and yes. find the sew along, which really helped just watch her and see how she did it. So I think that was great. So where the instructions were quite limited, there was a video to help. And I really liked the way that the um, collar stand was actually attached because normally you do attach it from the outside and I just found attaching it from the inside was an interesting thing to do that I hadn't done before mm. and I found that it did give a really neat finish. That's true. So, yeah. You were so actually top stitching on the top, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the outside, so yeah, it's great. How would we rate the difficulty level of this pattern? It's quite, I mean, it's an, a relatively easy pattern, isn't it? I mean, mm. there's a lot of gathering in the mm -hmm. skirt, um, but the sleeves went in quite easily, as mm -hmm. long as you're used to setting in a sleeve, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, this went in okay, although I do think there could have been a little bit of um, stay stitching added into the instructions mm -hmm. would have helped to, to not stretch out this neckline. So I think, yes, I think I would probably say it's an intermediate pattern. Because I okay. feel like you had to know a few things going into the pattern to sort of get the finish that you wanted. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think if, maybe if you tried a few of the techniques as a practice mm. on different fabric first, I think if you were a confident beginner, you could make it. But I think going into just making it, like we both, yeah. we didn't make a towel. No. No, no. <laughs> so we just went straight in making it with our fabric. I yeah. think, you're right, I think you'd have to to know kind of a few of those techniques. I think especially because the instructions are on the more basic side, they don't yeah. really hold your hand, mm -hmm. you know, like put in your collar. Mm. So if you've, <laughs> if you've put yeah. in a collar before, that's fine. But I think if you're a yeah. beginner, you'd want a little bit more 
perhaps detail and hand holding. Yeah. So are there any techniques or finishing details that you liked about the pattern? Um, yeah, I, I've already mentioned it, but I really liked the way that the collar was put on from the wrong mm -hmm. side. And I think that this is good. I mean, especially with your one, because you, yours is kind of a bit more open. Um, it just gives that nice finish to the outside when you do the top stitching on the outside. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I think it, it finished, it did finish really nicely. The sleeves came set in really beautifully. There was no issue getting those no. to sit yeah. nicely. Other patterns, you know, when you do a set in sleeves, sometimes you're wrestling and making sure that it's all um, fitting in without any um, puckers. Call it puckers and things. That's right. Yeah. So I do, I do think there were, it was nicely drafted and things. Is there anything that we didn't like about the pattern? I think the only thing I found a bit frustrating was that there was no instruction to stay stitch mm -hmm. the neckline. Now, I probably should have done that anyway. Mm -hmm. I probably knew enough that mm -hmm. I should have stay stitched the neckline because it did stretch out a little bit when I top stitched. I think if I made it again, I'd put in a thin strip of interfacing yeah. to just yeah. give it a little bit more structure here. Support, yeah. um, so that was the only thing that I didn't like. And again, I think before putting in this collar, it would have been good to stay stitch the neckline. Yes. I mean, I think we know about viscose, don't we? So we yeah, were very, yeah. very careful, obviously, yeah. sewing with it. So it hasn't stretched out too much, but I think it would have been helpful to have that in the instructions. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing I didn't, I mean it's not something I don't love but I think it would have been helpful to have. So just one thing that I would change or one thing I didn't quite like was how low this neckline is here and I think I will go back and make that a little bit higher just because I feel like it, it does sit quite low mm -hmm. on me and that might be because of my short torso but that is just one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah and mm -hmm. um, I think the only thing I didn't the only other thing I thought about was there were quite a few instructions in here which were helpful like about reducing the length of the waist mm -hmm. and about adding on so the sleeve yeah. piece that Amelia used mm -hmm. finishes about an inch shorter mm -hmm. and then you have to add the extra length on when you make it just a short yes. sleeve yeah. but I didn't read that initially because it's hidden in all mm -hmm. of these different things which are very helpful are hidden in different places around the pattern booklet so I think it would have been really useful to have a chunk of instructions at the beginning talking about how to alter the pattern because there are so many different things you can do mm. with this pattern which is great mm. but I just think it would be useful to have all of that information in one place at the beginning of the pattern instructions. Um, would you make it again? Yeah I think I would make it again mm -hmm. yeah I, I think I'd choose different fabric I feel like this is quite for me this feels quite 90s and I think it might just be because of the necktie and because of the color mm -hmm. um, nothing wrong with that I love the 90s <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah I just think that it, for me this is kind of like more of a wintry look mm -hmm. I, and I do think that's to the fabric and the color I think for more of a spring summer look kind of more like maybe a cotton lawn mm -hmm. or maybe a little floral dress would would um I'd like to make it again mm -hmm. in that type of fabric yeah I'd like to make it again as well I saw an inspiration picture um in a magazine that came through the door and they'd shared like a waist piece mm. and it used to be more of a floral chiffon for the spring which I thought looked really pretty and I'd love to use this pattern and hack it a bit more and try something different for the summer so I think I will make it again it's a lovely basic pattern I think yeah with so many different variations yeah yeah it is and also I quite um like the idea of just making the top version as well yes I think that that would look really nice just with jeans and and you could dress that up or mm. dress that down as well definitely yeah. so what fabrics do we think work well for this pattern so I think viscose does work really well because it's got that sort of lightness and so it works really nicely for the tears and for that floaty feel of the dress, mm -hmm. I think, yeah. Yeah, I think this um, sand wash viscose is um, not like typical viscose. I feel mm -hmm. like it's got a bit more body and a bit more structure. So I would like to try just a more kind of regular viscose or maybe viscose drill fabric. Yeah. Um, I think that would look nice. Yeah, also chambray. Cotton. Yeah, oh, chambray would, no. would be nice. Yeah, yeah chambray. <laughs> yeah. And cotton lawn, I was going to say, it's similar, Absolutely. isn't it, to chambray? Yeah, Just yeah. that lightness. Mm -hmm. Especially with the sleeves, I think. This is quite a nice sleeve for a cotton lawn. And, mm. and that one, they would look really pretty too, the longer mm. sleeve. Mm -hmm. But I probably wouldn't go anything heavier than that. I don't think I'd make it in a poplin. No, or I was thinking of like a needle cord or something like that. I think... Yeah. I think maybe it might be a bit too... Maybe a bit too much, although it might be nice much. for the autumn. Yeah, or, or maybe a blouse, actually. Or oh, you could hack with skirt too, couldn't you? Yes, yeah. Yeah, just make one one tier instead yeah. of the three yeah. and use needle cord. Yeah. I think there's lots of different lots varieties of, of fabrics. Yeah, definitely. It's been really fun to make it. It's been fun. We've been sending each other pictures along the way, but not yeah. too much. I didn't know exactly which yeah. which one you'd gone for till this morning. Yeah, it was really exciting um, to when Amelia opened the door and I got to see exactly how she'd made the dress. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, obviously, what um, variation she had chosen and things like that, because I didn't know. No, and we didn't. I think it looks really great. So yeah. yeah.
That was fun. I think there were definitely challenges along the way. I think I was saying this morning the collar gave me mm. conniptions. It did take me a long time to put it in, but I'm really pleased with it actually. Mm. Mm -hmm. I quite like the frill. So I'll definitely put that perhaps onto another dress as well. Yeah, and I think it's just little things like little tweaks which won't take long, like making mm. just making this. I think that, that would make it just look a, a lot nicer. Yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. the elastic channel. I think yeah. I was just worried that it would look a bit too like um, lousy, but I don't think yeah. it would because the fit is really nice. Mm -hmm. That's um, yeah, I probably should have made a twelve, but life's too short. <laughs> Sometimes life is too, <laughs> too short. short. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing our pattern review and coming along as the two Amelias mm -hmm. talked about our Amelia yeah. dresses. We're hoping to do another video like this again, I think. Yeah, definitely. Time. Yeah. So if you course. have got any Amelia patterns, do share them in the comments below. We'd and, love to um, see. We'd yeah. love to see them. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll see you in the next pattern review. Yeah, yeah. We can't wait for the next pattern review. See you soon. See you. Bye. <laughs> So I hope you enjoyed watching that. We certainly had a lot of fun filming it and putting the dresses together and getting together. This was such a lovely project. Do let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed seeing this type of chatty video. It's certainly different from what I've popped up on my channel before and I really hope you enjoyed it. If you would like to see more of these pattern reviews with Amelia, also let me know in the comments. And if you've got any Amelia patterns, do share those. I'd love to see them. As ever, it would be so great if you could like the video. And if you've not yet subscribed, do do that. And if you hit the notification bell, that will make you aware of when I do publish future vlogs. So that's it from me today. Like I say, I hope you enjoyed watching and I'll be back to share another video with you next week. In the meantime, I hope you have a lovely week full of lots of happy sewing. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. Bye.